Hi, this is Brass Check, and this is an addendum to our report for Monday, September 26th. Uh, amazing, two amazing stories. Uh, one, about one of the victims of this bombing, and there were real victims of it. Uh, luckily, nobody was killed, and it doesn't appear that anybody had... Well, it looks actually, I'm going to take that back, it looks like at least one person had a pretty serious injury to her eye. Uh, and she's an architect, and uh, we'll see if she regains vision to that eye. But anyway, here is the story that you need to know to understand everything <laughs> that goes on in this country and how things work. So she had her eye nearly blown out of her head. She went to the hospital. They treated her. It wasn't a life-threatening injury, and they actually patched her up to the full extent they could, and they discharged her. She went back to her apartment, which is on 23rd Street, with her ID, with her hospital discharge papers, drenched in blood. And what do you think the police did when she tried to get back onto her block and into her apartment where she could shower and get some clean clothes? They wouldn't let her. So what she had to do was spend the entire night walking the streets, sitting on park benches, waiting for her gym, where she had a membership to open up so she could at least shower and get the blood off her. That's our law enforcement. That's how they operate. That's how they think. Um, unbelievable. Speaking of our wonderful law enforcement, we did a uh, report almost a week ago now on the logistics of this, because life is about logistics. Where, how did the guy get to New York City? Did he drive? Uh, did he take the PATH train, which is like a subway train that runs from New Jersey to New York? If he took the PATH train, we talked about this earlier, that, might, that would explain why he went to 23rd Street. The thing that I couldn't imagine was if he took the PATH train, they surely have all the video of him. When you walk into the station, you're videotaped. When you're standing on the platform, you're videotaped. When you get off the train uh, at the platform of your destination, you are videotaped. When you walk through the um, turnstile to get out, you are videotaped. When you walk down the tunnel, you, you get it? You're videotaped constantly. So they, if, if he came via the path on a train, which it's now looking like he did, because it, apparently he wheeled these things around, which is just mind-boggling to me if it really happened that way. He took the train in. Now, I said, I said earlier, these are all minor details maybe, but not really. Um, there is no path train in his hometown. He had to get in a car, drive, park, wheel these bombs onto the path, take the path train, be photographed every step of the way, and then wheel them up and down 23rd Street, and then he probably, my guess is he probably went up 7th and then east on 27th based on the footage they have. And I also mentioned that if he had set the, the bomb in, in the shore, New Jersey shore, he had to take the parkway, the Garden State Parkway, and you are certainly videotaped on the Garden State Parkway, and you're recorded and measured and everything. So why don't they have that? Maybe they do. Maybe they're being coy. Or maybe they're manufacturing it right now. Who knows? They don't have that. Um, we're going to assume now that he did come in on the path train. Why don't they have that footage? Boy, that would really prove something, right? You see him with a whole bunch of heavy stuff on the path, and you see him going home. He went home, right? He probably went home the way he came. So there should be footage of that. Nothing. The only footage we have, or the only footage that I've seen, is him on 27th Street. That's a little strange. Why don't we have footage of him on 23rd Street? And don't tell me because the cameras were all damaged by the explosion. Even if they were, uh, the recording medium uh, is not in the camera. The recording medium is somewhere else in the building. So even if the camera was blown to smithereens, uh, somewhere there, is, there should be video of him on 23rd Street. Why aren't they showing that? Why is it that the only thing they're showing is this oddly placed bomb on 27th Street. And they're not showing him coming to New York. They're not showing him leaving New York. They're not showing him planting bombs on 23rd Street. And they're not showing uh, any record of him going on the Garden State Parkway. Uh, it's all very suspicious to me. 
you can draw your own conclusions, but um, as usual, this is a, a dance of the seven veils. First it happens, and we have no idea who did it, and then it turns out, well, yeah, we kind of did know who did it, uh, and yeah, we've been talking to the guy, and we knew all about him, um, and you, what are we going to find out next? And what, now, what we're not going to find out is what he has to say, because apparently this guy that looked okay, remember, I mean, he was shot, I'm sure that wasn't pleasant, but he was sitting up, uh, with, I guess with the help of a stretcher, uh, he looked a little dazed, but now it's a week later, uh, and he can't uh, talk to anybody, shades of the Boston bombing. Uh, also, never, you know, don't forget, he didn't build just one kind of bomb. He apparently built all different kinds of bombs. Um, possible thing that went on here, there were a lot of guys doing this. The FBI knew about all of it, and this is the one they want to hang it on for whatever reason. You know, sounds bizarre, but, you know, when we get to the bottom of these stories, there's usually a lot of bizarreness going on. So that's the addendum to our Monday, September 26th report. We're just going to watch this and see how it evolves.